are the famed whiffin' poops of Yale University. Their leader is one of these three young men. What is your name, please? My name is William Hart. My name is William Hart. My name is William Hart. Only one of these young men is the real William Hart. The other two are imposters that will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth with your host, Bob Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to Tell the Truth. Brought to you tonight by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Good, Good evening, Bob. Open up your envelopes, if you will, and follow along with me. I, William Hart, have just graduated from Yale University. While a senior, I was privileged to be elected musical director, or as we call it, pitch pipe, of this country's best-known college singing group, the Whiffenpoops. We gentlemen songsters have been serenading Louis, the Temple Bar, and the tables down at Maury's since the year 1909. The Whiffenpoops boast an international reputation and spend almost every weekend of the college year on tour. All members of our group must be graduating seniors. And so when we sing for you tonight, it will mark the last time all of us will appear together as Whiff and Poops. Signed, William Hart. <laughs> now, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be William Hart. As you heard, we start this questioning, if we may, with Peggy Cat. Peggy? Thank you, gee, you all sing just great, whichever one of you is the real singer. Tell me, number two, what is a cappella? A cappella is without accompaniment. I see. Uh, number three, who was Maury? I'm not sure. Um, there is a Maury um, Temple Bar. Yes. I'm not sure who Maury was. Uh, what, well, number one, what street is Maury's on? It's on York Street. Thank you. Uh, number two, what does the name Whiff and Poof mean? Well, it's a half bird. It's half, a half a bird? Half bird, half fish that surfaces to come up for catch every winter. I see. <laughs> uh, number three, what's Casey's? Casey's is a restaurant in New Haven. Thank you. Um, number two, what's Skull and Bones? Skull and Bones? Yes. I don't really know. You don't know what Skull and Bones is. Uh, Orson B. Yes, number two, when you come to Cambridge to beat Harvard once a year, uh, where is the Rathskeller? Do you know? Rathskeller, I'm not sure. Do you ever go up there to see the game? No, I've, I've never been up to Cambridge. All right. Number three, uh, where is White's? It's a store in uh, New Haven. Do you know where White's is? Yes. Uh, it's on Chapel Street. All right. Uh, number one, uh, do you know who Louis was? He was uh, Louis Linder, I believe. He was the first proprietor of Morris. All right. Do you know, number one, again, where the Schubert Theater is in New Haven? It's right across from the Taft Hotel next to Casey's on College Street. All right. Number two, do you have a complete new group every year? Yes, we do. It's, so there's nobody left from the old group? No, they're what all... What if they were all lousy one year? No, that's tough. I can... <laughs> <laughs> Real tough. That's tough. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number one, who is the master of Timothy Dwight? Uh... Sorry, I don't know. Uh, number two, a famous <laughs> author has just uh, been named master at uh, Yale. Uh, do you know his name? A famous author? Author. No, I don't know. Do you know number three? I think it's John Hersey. Thank you. Do you know the master of Timothy Dwight, number three? Yes, I think it's Mr. Bergen. Thank you. Number one, um, can you tell me what Wolf's Head is? It's a secret society on uh, York Street. Thank you. Um, number two, who started the Whiff and Poop? Well, it was started by four young men of the original society. Thank you. Number two, three, <laughs> how do you get into the Whiff and Poop? Well, one is elected to the Whiff and Poop by the outgoing group. You don't have to audition as a singer? No. <laughs> Tom Poston. Number, well, number three, thank you, bud. Did number, number three, do all of the whiff and poofs automatically sing in this choral group? Yes, they do. And that's, that's just been a lecture. <laughs> Funny. Well, I guess they would try to pick them by having nice voices. Uh, <laughs> it's better. Uh, number two, you didn't know where the skull and bones was or what it was. Do you know where the Schubert Theater is in New Haven? 
Yes, sir. Number I asked one, that. I asked number one said it's right, in, it's right across the tap. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to know, number one, what a major triad would be if you started in the, if you were singing in the key of G. G? Yes. Uh, would be, uh, I'm confused. <laughs> it's okay, you were elected. You didn't have to audition for this. <laughs> be either C, E, G, but going from G on up, and I'm, let's see, that'll be G, um, <laughs> it's a call of blank. <laughs> That's all the time we have, it's time for you now to mark your ballot, so please mark them at once, if you will, without change, without any consultation whatsoever, and just simply vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots I see are marked. And, of course, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Hey, well, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three, bud. I deliberately asked number two a question about the Schubert because I thought number one and two's answers were wrong. It's uh, next to the tap, across the street from Casey's, rather than just the opposite of that. I voted for number three. Peggy Cat. Well, I voted for number three partly because of the Schubert Theater, but Skull and Bones is number two is the Secret Society, and... Number one, I thought he should have known that major triad. <laughs> Horse and bean. Well, the Taft is across the street, actually, from the show. There's a rotten little alley in between, so it's <laughs> kind of across. And number one, I liked how number one tried for the triad, but right? I voted for number three because he knew where White's was on Chapel Street, and he also said one is elected. And it seems that when you're in Yale, you say one goes and has a soda, or <laughs> one takes a nap. You know? <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> I voted for number three for a very special reason. He knew who the master of Timothy Dwight was, and I've stayed there, and I've had a wonderful time with both Mr. and Mrs. Berg and their great hosts. Well, that's it, then. The die is cast with a solid, unanimous vote, which sometimes you win with and sometimes you fall with. Let's find out what you do with this one now, as we learn which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is William Hart. Will the real William Hart please stand up? I can't. Oh. <laughs> and now here, here are the Whiff and Poos of the class of 1965 singing together for the last time. We are poor little lambs who have lost. show and of course congratulations on your graduation thank you and for having brought such a wonderful singing group we enjoyed every minute of it now uh, numbers one and two would you come out and do your duet that you were <laughs> 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 number one what is your real name and what do you really do my name is Lansing Palmer and I do promotion for Sovereign Coffee and number two what is your real name and what do you do my sir? name is Shelley Markham I sell clothes for Barney's Men's Store in New York City <laughs> Checking the score, we find that the panel was smart. They started off by covering themselves with glory first thing tonight. There were no incorrect votes, but in that case still, $150 comes your way, along with our sincere and warm thanks for joining this evening with us, and we thank you. Goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs> the panel will be back at it in just a minute, right after this film. Our next team of challengers.
What is your name, please? My name is Kay Sand. My name is Kay Sand. My name is Kay Sand. Once again, follow along with your copy of this one, if you will, please, panel. I, Kay Sands, and my husband, Jim, make our living as professional campers. To prove that camping can be a way of life, during the past five years, we have spent some 1,300 days and nights outdoors. Our headquarters is a canvas tent. We sleep on the ground, cook on a camp stove, and do our laundry and bathing out of buckets. We have camped out in windstorms, floods, and blizzards, and in temperatures ranging from 122 degrees above zero to 62 degrees below zero. Our latest experiment with the camper's life began on June 3rd, 1964, and will end tonight. I have not spent one night indoors for over a year. Signed, K. Sands. <laughs> These three ladies all claim to be Kay Sands. And we'll start this cross-examination with our own outdoor girl, <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Thank you, Bud. Number three, may I ask a very serious question? Why did you do this? My husband and I wanted to. Why? Well, we're, we like camping. <laughs> you sure like camping? <laughs> Number two, are you going to write a book about this? Well, we are in the process. We're in the process, really, of the second book right now that we're planning to combine with the first one, make the fir making the first one better. What was the first one about? Camping? Camping. But now we've more. <laughs> How did you get? <laughs> Number one, where did you spend the time that it was 62 degrees below zero? Colorado. Where? Uh, around Gunnison. Tom Poston. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number three, what does Coleman mean to a camper? Well, it can mean several things. Uh, we have a common burner. Have you? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> they need all those things. Number two, what, uh, what tool that a camper might be obliged to use is double-bitted? I'm sorry, I have Number two, it. what tool is double-bitted? Double-bitted? Yeah. Double-bitted. A kind of an axe could be double-bitted. Uh, thank you. Number one, do you know what a buck saw is? A buck saw? I don't believe I do. Do you know numbers just by chance? Do you happen to know number three? I beg your pardon? Do you know what a buck saw is? No, I don't. Uh, number three. Uh, dear. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Number one, do you have a house of your own? No. You just have a tent. Yes. <laughs> no, number three, uh, where are you going to sleep tonight? Central Park? No, we're going to stay in a hotel for the first time. Oh, that will be a blessing. Let me tell you, you're going to love it. Uh, Number two, where's the alley gash? I don't know. Thank you. Number three, have you ever heard of the alley gash? Yes, ma'am. Where is it? Wyoming. Thank you. Um, number one, what's pemmican? I don't know. Oh. Arson Bean. Number uh, one, do you know where the dunes are uh, in the Midwest? The non-ocean dunes in America? Yes. Where? Arizona. Uh, number three, do you agree with that? No. Where are they? Death Valley. Number two, do you know some dunes? Yes, I do. In California, they're, they're dried up lakes, and they're also dried up lakes in, in Denver. Well, there's a lot of dunes South among them. All right, number, uh, number one, when it was 62 below, did you still bathe in a bucket? I mean, where, it says here... <laughs> well, you must have froze. Wasn't that miserable? Yes. So yeah. what, did, what did you do? Just pour go to the... Oh. <laughs> That's all the time we have for questions. But there is time for voting, so please mark your ballots at once without consultation as usual. Don't change them once you have notes to late for that, I'm sorry to say, Kitty. But just simply mark, vote for number one, vote for number two, or vote for number three. All ballots marked. Yours marked, Orson? No, it isn't. All right. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I think it could have been me, because I know where those dunes are in, in Illinois, in Indiana. Yeah, but I voted for number two, because she knew what a double-bitted axe was, and uh, I suspect that uh, she might have had occasion to use a buck saw, too, in her time. It's one of those little cross-cuts that use one person uses. 
Peggy. Well, I was going to vote for number three till she said the alley gas was in Wyoming. So then I switched to number one, even though she didn't know what pemmican was. It's the thing that you put the sock in you heat it up like an Eskimo. Eat it. <laughs> what, the sock? No, yeah, put it up the in the sock. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the alley gas was in pemmican. I, I voted for number one. I, I was amazed that none of them knew that the famous dunes were in uh, wherever they were. He said... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, she looks like a lady who has seen 62 Below and lived through it. Uh, get the car out. Well, I know I'm wrong. I got mixed up between the alley gas and the dunes. I voted for number three. She knew what a Coleman lamp was, and um, they were all extraordinarily good. Well, it's divided up this time. From unanimity, you've gone to really split <laughs> wide open. Two for number one, one for number two, one for number three. Very well. Let's find out now. Which one of these young ladies, in truth, is Kay Sands? Will the real Kay Sands please stand up? Thank you very much. Incidentally, Kay and her husband Jim are the camping editors of a weekly publication called the Fishing and Hunting News. Now, number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Maria Radislovich and I'm an interior designer with the architectural firm of Harrison and Abramovich. Thank you. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Nancy Corum. I'm a registered nurse on a train. On a train? <laughs> Sounds like it might have been the Chattanooga Choo Choo. <laughs> well, in checking the score, we find you did well. There were two jobs of fooling there in any event that made them vote twice wrong, and that's two times $250 for a total of $500. You'll find some happy bargains with that, I'm sure. And thank you for being with us tonight. It was very happy. Good night, and God bless you. Arawak. Now let's have our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Dominique Lapierre. My name is Dominique Lapierre. My name is Dominique Lapierre. Please follow along with your copies of this one and read along with it. I, Dominique Lapierre, an editor of Paris Match, am co-author of a book, the heroine of which is not a beautiful woman, but a beautiful city. The city is Paris, and the book is an hour-by-hour -hour account of its liberation and how the city escaped Adolf Hitler's orders to reduce it to rubble. Despite the fact that I was in Paris during the liberation, it still took my co-author, Larry Collins, and me three years to dig out the authentic details of this remarkable story. We examined thousands of Allied and German military documents and interviewed more than 800 of the Germans, French, British, and Americans involved. Our research turned up the fact that on the very day that the first Allied troops entered Paris, Adolf Hitler screamed to his chief of staff, I demand to know, yes or no, is Paris burning now? From this, we took the title of our book. We call it, Is Paris Burning? Signed, Dominique Lapierre. <laughs> well, you heard these three gentlemen all claiming to be one and the same. Dominique Lapierre by name. We'll start this round with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm fascinated by the name, uh, LaPierre. In fact, I'm fascinated by the whole French uh, scene over there. Uh, number two, how did Paris escape uh, being uh, uh, blasted to rubble as Hitler demanded? Because the German general didn't follow his orders. Number one, uh, what is your opinion of the reason why he didn't? Well, or do you agree with number two, first of all? I certainly do. Why didn't he, in your opinion? Well, the General uh, Koltitz uh, refused to follow the orders he had received from Hitler. Why? Do you know? Oh, he was afraid that it would be a burden, as I suppose, after the war, and uh, possibly for sentimental reason, too. Thank you. Number three, oh, I, 
Peggy Cash. Number two, who's Pierre Gallant? He's the husband of uh, Olivier de Avilland. Thank you. Number three, what does he do in Paris match? He's the uh, secretaire general, uh, something like manager. I see. Number one, what was the first American division to enter Paris? The eight. Thank you. Uh, number two, had General, what is his name? The German general number two? Uncultured. Had he ever met Hitler? Yes, he had. Thank you. Number three, was he a Juncker? He was, yes. Thank you. Number one, what happened in his meeting with Hitler? He was disgusted. He felt that Hitler was really mad at that time. Thank you. Number three, where did this meeting take place? In East Prussia. In East Prussia. Thank you. Watson B. Number three, did he meet him more than once? He had met him, I believe, one. Just the one time? Yes. And felt he was mad? Yes. Number two, uh, in the New York Post, I read the most insane rave of your book that I've ever read, and there were two words he used at the end. Do you remember? If you're the author, you know what these words are. What, what, what are they? The, in the review from the New York Post of your book, he said two words I would say about this book. Do you remember? Number one, do you know what they were? Number three? Number three? Uh, and number one, uh, who is Jean de Montangon? Jean de Montangon, he was a, an aide to General de Gaulle. Uh, number two, uh, wh who wanted to keep the Gaulle from coming back into Paris in, in the... Uh, Communists. Uh, do you agree with that, number three? And also the, the Americans. W number three, wh why did the Americans... Kitty. Uh, well, I'll ask that. Why did the Americans what? Want to keep the Gaulle out. Want to keep the Gaulle out, number three. Uh, because they felt that they, their plan was to bypass Paris. Number two, can you tell me why Rome was spared? Rome? Yes. Because of the Vatican. Number one, who is Matthias? Matthias is an industrialist in Italy. Uh, number two, uh, who is, uh, what is General uh, Gavin's position now? Gavin? Number three? I don't know. You don't know. Uh, number two, who owns Paris Match now? Uh, Prévost. Uh, Prévost. Thank you. That's all the time we have, but you may mark your balance. Well, that I hope you will do swiftly and happily and without any consultation, of course. Please mark your ballot now for number one, or number two, or number three. <laughs> All ballots marked? Yes, sir. Very well. Ma'am and sir. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. I, I, liked, I liked him. I liked the way his clothes looked, too. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy Cash, what well, is they your job? They were choice? all absolutely terrific. But, and even though he looks too young to have been around in the Second World War, I voted for number three. Just a second for a pretty face. Horse <laughs> <laughs> and beef. Well, number one has a little uh, Legion of Honor on there, which you can't get unless you really want it. But on the other hand, it could be number two's suit, so I voted for number two. <laughs> also, those words were superb and magnificent. I never read such a rave for a book as Paris, as Paris Burning. Kitty. I voted for number three. I've got the book and I'm going to read it. I can't wait. Um, Matthias works on Paris Match in New York. And I think if you do work on Paris Match, you would know Jean Prévost's full name. So I voted for number three. Very well. That's widely split again. Uh, we have one for number one, one for number two, two for number three. Let's go with that and find out now which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is Dominique Lapierre. Will the real Dominique Lapierre... Please, stand up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We wish you every success with your good book. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is René Cerizol. I'm a sales agent for aluminum and steel mills in France. What is your name and what do you do? My name is Robert Trebu. I'm a co-owner and host of a restaurant called Le Manoir. <laughs> and checking the score, you find you did just as well as the round before you. There were two incorrect votes at $250 each, and that, of course, means twice to $50 or $500. Thank you, gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed yourselves this evening. We did. Good night, and God bless you. take time out for a brief film. Back in a minute. Post, and I'm sorry to say, will not be with us next week. He'll be oh. appearing at the Seattle Opera House in Bye Bye Birdie with Pat Finley. Good luck, Don. Thank you, Bud. And in Thank his you. place will be the star of the Broadway musical Baker Street, Sherlock Holmes himself, Fritz Weaver.
Good night to you, panel, and thank good you night. for the evening. Good night, bud. Good night from Winston. And good night to all of you. Of course, don't forget to join us at the same time next week. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon in the daytime show. And don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Sodman production. And brought to you by Tempo, the charcoal tip cigarette with good old fashioned flavor. Tempo. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth. The program was pre recorded.